This Ag News update brought to you by American Implement, indebted to the past, committed to the future. In a moment, USDA Undersecretary Bill Northey. SNS Trailer Sales with two locations in Ness City, Kansas, is where everybody goes to buy or rent trailers. They feature the all new, all aluminum Mauer grain trailer with all of the electric options, the easy to load detached trailers, and a huge stock of header trailers. At the west location, you'll find bumper poles, goose necks, and oil field specialty trailers, along with flat and utility beds for pickups. SNS Trailer Sales in Ness City and on the web, but remember, you do have to spell out the end. When you've had a best friend for over 50 years, you develop a trust. And the Scott Co-op has been a trusted rural friend since 1957. A co-op keeps money in the area, doing business for and with their members. And that helps keep their hometown thriving with keeping money in the community. Scott Co-op is not just an elevator. It's the rural way of doing business. So when you see an elevator, remember your friends at Scott Co-op. Joining us now is Bill Northey, Under Secretary for the USDA and uh, one of the good guys. And just so glad <laughs> to, to have you serving uh, the farmers, of course, as a working farmer as well. But uh, uh, USDA, you, especially with, with what uh, you kind of help oversee, uh, you've been busy. Let's first kind of maybe go through that list. Uh, top of the mind of farmers is uh, uh, market facilitation. The next tranche looks like it is uh, in the queue as we speak. It is. Uh, so our, our part of responsibility is Farm Service Agency, NRCS, and, and Crop Insurance Risk Management Agency. Out of FSA is those MFPs, and, and, uh, and we've announced, the Secretary announced, we will have a second round of payments of this, which will be 25% of the total. Producers should have received already 50% of the total. Of course, we do have a end date for sign-up of December 6th. So producers after that, uh, unless something extends, would not be able to sign up for that program. But we are make, looking at making that second round of, of payments in this round in this uh, MFP. That'll total um, three to three and a half billion dollars in that second mm -hmm. round, about fifty percent of what a producer got in the first round. So it's it's kind of the way the the plan was. The plan is working. It is. It is now, and I sure hope the other part of the plan. I hope. We're right. getting closer to an agreement. Right. That's right. certainly, this is to bridge to that next agreement where we not only get those markets back, soybeans and pork uh, but, and cotton, but we also get those new markets that we need as well. You have also, uh, working with those who were faced with challenge uh, because of prevent planning and just because of delays, uh, delaying crop insurance premium payments to get some of these things ironed out. We are. We're seeing a lot of harvest issues in, in lots of part of the country. I was in uh, North Dakota on Friday and Saturday this last week, and they only have 15 percent of their corn harvested with snow on the ground and cold, freezing weather and just a real mess. Um, so we had delayed the, the due date of those, those premiums, those crop insurance premiums from October 1 to December 1. We're now delaying that another 60 days to February 1. So if you make your crop insurance payment before February 1, we'll not have any interest due. Uh, interest would start after that. But in the interest of folks having issues in cash flow, us being able to settle insurance claims, it makes sense to be able to delay that. We're talking with Bill Northey, Undersecretary at USDA. Let's take a break. We're going to talk CRP coming up in just a moment. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation has been around a long time, and a lot of folks have trusted them to design, build, and service all sizes of commercial and on-farm storage for grain and equipment. Wolfter is also known for their outstanding irrigation division where they stock a complete selection of nozzles, regulators, drops, gear drives, electrical, and structure components. Looking for an electric motor? Wolfter has a large selection in single and three phase. Next time, reach out to the pros who have decades of experience at taking care of business the right way. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation. Day and night, till the job is done, Teeter is the one that works for you. Fields of green, reaching toward the sun, Teeter is the one that works for you. Teeter is the one. 
Teeter is the one that works for you. Teeter Irrigation, your source for water management. And our special guest is Bill Nor, the uh, Undersecretary, USDA, and uh, Mr. Undersecretary, always oh, Mr. Undersecretary, I like to call yeah, you Bill, but still, Bill. I know, Absolutely. I know, but, but uh, other thing coming up uh, shortly is uh, another sign up for Conservation Reserve Program, and, and again, it's kind of one of those programs that continues to evolve. A lot of times, when that many years ago, we kind of celebrated a milestone, but now looking at it, dare we say it's maybe even a modern CRP. You know, it really is. So I think CRP started in some ways in the 80s to be able to get some land out of production, but it also was addressing soil erosion. Now it addresses water quality or really in the early 90s, late 90s, also wildlife. So it is a mix of all those um, needs. And we have an environmental benefits index that attempts to measure that balance and then producers bid for their their interest in being in. Maybe we both want to do the same things, but you're willing to take a slightly lower amount than I am, mm -hmm. and so your bid is accepted. Mine might not be. Um, we will have another round of this open CRP bidding process starting in, in December. Not set the start mm -hmm. date. We're still waiting for some rules to come back. Probably be open maybe two or three months. Um, and uh, there will be a cap, according to this last farm bill, there will be a cap on those rental rates. Right. That 85% of the county average rental rate. Those rental rates will be posted on Farmers.gov next week. Uh, so producers can go there right. and see that county average rental rate and see what they need to stay below uh, to be able to have a competitive bid. And is that really kind of where we're heading? Because I know there's some groups that say, well, do we really need a CRP program, or are there other programs maybe that could be enhanced to get some of the same benefits we're willing to reach? You know, there is, and there's also a continuous enrollment yes. CRP, a general enrollment CRP, a conservation reserve enhancement program. So it has evolved into several different pieces, and some conservation activities fit better in one of those buckets than others. So we have more flexibility. Uh, but still, the biggest share of the acres will have uh, over 20 million acres in the general enrollment CRP. That's a big amount of acres out there. And it's certainly been a while since producers really had a chance to sign up for that program as well. Right. Okay, before I let you go, I, 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 I would be remiss and probably get a lot of grief, but I didn't ask you about hemp, okay. especially okay. With, with the RMA with risk management, with the availability possibly of, of uh, crop insurance, I guess it will be made available, but maybe in a way, is that something that uh, you've heard a lot of feedback from producers, those that want to get involved in that industry? There's a great deal of interest in hemp and all around the country, uh, everywhere I've been say they're going to be the new center of hemp production. We are going to have some tools, they're going to be limited to start with, we're going to have some availability of loans, conservation programs as well. It's going to be a challenge, but we're going to get and be able to help producers that want to grow hemp. All right, Mr. Undersecretary, always great to see you. Thanks for, uh, thanks for spending some time with us. You bet. Great Bill, Bill Nord, the Undersecretary of USDA, our guest. Stay with us. We'll have more in just a moment. The cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. one exception, keeping electricity affordable. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, your touchstone energy cooperative. That's been an Ag News update. Stay up to date by keeping your radio tuned to 1030 KBUF for Ag News and market information throughout the day. Also, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching.